Good evening. Our opening song is number 743, Gather Us In. Number 743, we will be singing verses 1, 3, and 4. Son and the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Let us call to mind our sin and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, 
so that you became a model for all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them asked, one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, Which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest in the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello. How are you tonight? Good to hear. So last week we started a reading from 1 Thessalonians. Remember that Thessalonians was Paul's first letter he ever wrote. Um, and he's writing it to these, to these Thessalonians. And remember, he was there six months before he wrote this, this letter. And he had to rush out of there quickly. There was persecution. He had to leave for his life. Only there about maybe like four or five weeks. But in a very short amount of time, he was able to do a lot of good. And a lot of conversion happened in those very few weeks that he was there. And in the months that he, since he had left, he wanted to know, like, how are things going? Remember that Timothy and Sylvanus report to him that there's good news and bad news. Good news is, is there's still a church there. They still believe, but bad news is they're falling back into sin, and they fear the end times, they fear death. Paul said, give me my pen and my notebook and we'll write them a letter. And so we are today reading from Thessalonians. And so the first thing Paul does whenever he's responding to these Thessalonians is he sits with that good news first. He's a good news first type type of, of guy. So he's affirming them in the faith that they have. He's commending them in the face of so much adversity, living in a culture that's pagan, and that's a caustic 
towards their new faith, living in a world that is not supporting them, in a governance that wants to obliterate them, they're remaining strong in their faith. They might not feel strong, they might have sin, but they still have faith. And they want to do this well, and they want to remain committed to what Paul handed to them, which is what Christ gave to Paul. And so he wants the, they want to hold on to what Christ gave them through Paul. And so he first commends them for having faith. And again, Paul is starting with the good news first. There's also like a, a strategy in that, if you think about it. He goes right to the jugular and says like, you horrible Thessalonians, you fell back in this sin, you idiot stupid people, you stupid people, like what are you doing? He does that first. Click. Bye bye, Paul. Like, down goes the letter, we're nothing to do with you. If that's the first time they hear from Paul, after he's been gone for all this time, this man that they loved, first thing he does is say, you horrible rotten sinner, you and that's the first thing Paul does, how will that help them? Like, how will that move the needle? It will guilt them, it will shame them, it will turn them off, make them hate themselves, make them feel more hopeless, more despondent, go on and on and on and on. That isn't the way to win souls. Paul knows that. He starts firstly with the faith that they have and affirms them in that. And he also says that, like, when I was there, you were strong. And now I'm not there. I know that you're weak. I know that you need help. I need help. We all need help in this journey of the church, in this journey of holiness. We can't do it ourselves. And so Paul is telling them that, I wish I could be there to help you. But in my absence, support each other, love each other, and help each other on this journey. But Paul's also not looking just at the strategy, he's also looking at what is real faith? Like what does it really mean to have faith? That if we're going to begin to kind of, we talked about last week, kind of like land the plane, leave this church here, think about the, the end times, the last things we have, all saints, all souls this coming week, all the death and salvation and the last judgment, all of those big ideas, if we're going to enter into those with faith and confidence, then what is faith? Faith is just simply not having blind faith or just believing something without evidence or just ascending to a truth or an idea or a proposition. Faith is something that we really do experience. Faith is a relationship. Faith is a real tangible knowledge of something. We often use the word faith to say, well, I can't prove it. You know, I don't know what's there. I just trust it'll happen. I have faith. You know, I don't see it. I don't get it. I don't experience it. I have faith. That ain't faith. That's stupid. That ain't faith. Faith is something real. We can really experience the living God. That's the point of why we do this. We don't come here and sit through long belated homilies just to get through another obligation, sit through Mass, and wish we get the Eucharist and get a line. We don't do that because it means nothing. We do all that because it means everything. It facilitates this profound encounter with the living God, with the Father. We talked about last week, with the Father. The Father wants us to experience Him, to hear Him, to feel His embrace, and feeling it and seeing it, and experiencing it, and living it, that's faith. That's faith. Faith isn't, I can't see it, so I'll just, I'll just, I'll just believe it anyways. No, like, like, that means you haven't tried. Like, dive deep into this. And Post knows the human nature. He knows what they're susceptible to. They're going to start falling back into sin, and only see their sin, and lose sight of what he gave them. They're going to see the world and all the world has to offer and lose sight of the solitude and the beauty and the intimacy that he was giving them with God. He wants them to rediscover that and not lose that, but lose the world and stop looking at the world. That for that to happen, 
we have to be people who are actively engaging in love of God and love of neighbor. As Matthew tells us from our Lord, that's the greatest law. That's the purpose and the mission of our lives. Not just, yeah, I love God. I love God. I love my neighbor. I won't do anything for you. I couldn't care less about you. Yeah, I'll say my grace before meals and maybe I'll get the mass once a, once a month and, you know, I'll, think, I'll say in our Father before I go to bed once a week. Like, that ain't love of God. That ain't love of neighbor. That's foolishness. This means we give everything that we are and everything that we have for the other, other being my neighbor, the other being God, and want to keep pouring myself out and not living for me but for the other and for my God, experience profound things, experience the effects of love, and that's faith. And so Paul is reminding these Thessalonians that faith isn't just something you ascend to abstractly of the mind, it's something you experience if you guys stick together, help each other out, serve each other, and keep worshiping God, and keep seeking the other, and laying yourself down for the other. Because without that, you won't have faith. Without that, you'll keep falling into the things, and the sin, and the allures, and the traps of the world, and of the enemy. But if you truly are living this gospel, and living this law of all laws, love of God and neighbor, there's no room for sin. There's no fruitfulness for the enemy in our lives. And we'll understand what it really means then to die in Christ for the end times, my judgment, my salvation, the saints and the souls in purgatory, everything will make sense in the posture, in the frame, in the infrastructure of my love and my faith. Not a blind ascent, but a real interaction and a real encounter. May our faith become that each day. It ain't easy. I struggle with it too every day. But when we support each other in that, struggle with it each day, give ourselves to it each day. So faith is something we know and experience and can truly witness to the world so we can help others have that, save them, and one day all of us be a family forever in heaven as saints. All right, it's enough rambling. I'll get on. Love you. Let's now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, and for us men for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and arose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Present now our prayers to our Heavenly Father. That through the church's announcement of the gospel, Christ's saving mission will reach to all ends of the earth. We pray to the Lord. That civil leaders will use their authority to protect and provide for the poor, the oppressed, and the unborn. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord God. That our parish will grow in devotion and love for the Holy Eucharist and be filled with the charity and compassion of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and to consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Tim McElhaney, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause now and add your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly God, we come before you this day with faith. Now you hear and answer all prayer according to your will. May our faith be more than just paragraphs of the creed or abstract ideas we try to just ascend to blindly and without any reason to go there. But may faith really be these intense and and passionate encounters with the living God and these intense encounters of service to others and of emptying out ourselves. And in that, like the Thessalonians long ago, may we support each other in doing that, that hard work of building a true faith, but in that also become vibrant and brilliant and beautiful so that this faith might shine forth and become evangelistic, bringing more people to this truth, more people to the freedom of the church, more people to the paths of eternal life. So one day, all of us, after going through our own end times and last things, that we may enter on into paradise to be saints and a family forever. And we ask all of these things confidently through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for the preparation of gifts is number 515, We Are the Light of the World. Blessed us, O Lord, when 
those who hunger and thirst for justice, they will be satisfied. Bless us, O oh Lord, hear our cry for justice. Bless us, O oh Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. May your light shine before all, that they may see. Blessed are they who show others mercy, they will know mercy too. Bless us, O oh Lord, hear our cry for mercy. Bless us, O oh Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. May your light shine before all, that they may see the good that we do and give the pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but our sin that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By his obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we now acclaim. Holy, 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 of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
a mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Michael, Margaret, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. commandment formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 809, I Receive the Living God.
pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to you. Have a great week. Our closing song is number 442, Sing with all the saints in glory, number 442. Prophets, all mysteries and sages, 